called me last year and, and I, I couldn't make it, but it is uh, indeed an honor to be here. My wife Rose is here and I appreciate you being here. Thank you for the life we share. I want to introduce my family, but I've got too many here to introduce. <laughs> <laughs> Sister, thank y'all for being here. Very, I almost to say everybody. St. <laughs> Luke has a special place in my heart. Um, um, my mother grew up in this church. And, uh, my mother and father got married in this church. And not, not this particular sanctuary, but, but the old sanctuary, which I don't remember, but I've seen pictures of it. But, but, um, but Saint, it is a cool opportunity, and, and St. Luke is a uh, family. So it is. So Jimmy said, I need an introduction. Introduction. I know everybody here, so it is an honor to be here today. And let, let me reiterate the happy birthday. I mean, happy Father's Day. Sorry. And it was really cool to see Mr. Roper get that this morning. And I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers here. Even if your father is just a child, you're not the biological father. You never know the impact you can have on somebody. A man can have on, on, on a child. Uh, my wife gave me a 50th birthday celebration years ago. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, but it was a really, really nice, nice uh, dinner. But what stands out to me, there was about seven or eight young men and a couple of young ladies that I work with in church, but they had some really cool things to say. And, and you never know the impact that a man can take the opportunity to give back and listen that you can have, have on the child. And uh, Father is a, is a special it's a special thing. Uh, during the week, I listened to a podcast uh, with a guy by the name of John O'Leary. And, and uh, I don't listen to him every day, but when I'm traveling, I try to catch up. But John O'Leary is, is a guy that um, he was burned over 90% of his body when he was a child. And, and significant burns, but he survived. And today, he interviews people that have overcome significant um, crises in their lives. And those people now are making <laughs> Uh, contribution to their community. I really enjoy listening to his podcast because it's always inspiring and encouraging. But he ends each podcast with the same seven questions. He asks seven questions of each one, and one of those questions is this. If you could sit on a park bench and overlook the ocean and, and have a conversation with anyone living or dead, who would it be? And everybody, they, they, they struggle with that question. And a lot of different answers, and they say, can I come back to that question? He won't let you come back. But every time I listen to that question, I, I wish if he was interviewing me, I'd have that answer right away. It would be my father. Without question, uh, it would be my father. My father died when I was 11. And I can't tell you how many times in my life I would have loved to pick up the phone or, 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 or driven the farm or wherever he's going to be, where he'd be living if he was still alive, right? Um, and just say, how do you navigate this? Or if a cool thing happens to you, just to, to see if he was proud of it. Fathers, we make a significant difference. We can make a significant difference. One of the most memorable moments of my father, or two, one involved a belt, and I want to get into that. <laughs> but but, but a, a, one, another one was, I was playing basketball, about 10 years old, and I was playing basketball. And I was walking back up the hill after the basketball game, and my father was standing by, he had an old truck. He was standing by the truck, and he didn't run up and hug me or give me five or say, hey, you played great. He looked at me. Nodded and smile. I still feel that nod and smile. The impact we can make on people, fathers, is, is significant. We sometimes forget that. I thank Ethan for reading the scripture this morning. And that particular scripture is, is it's been on my mind for about a couple weeks. I have, uh, I've got a good friend. Started out as just a mentoring a young man. He's a he's a young man and he's also young in the ministry. And he's um, an interim pastor of a church. And he's been calling and we'll meet and we'll talk and seeking advice. And over the last two weeks, that conversation has changed somewhat. It used to be preparing service and what should you do and how do you shepherd. And, and, but over the last two weeks, he's been troubled. And so finally, it, it came to a head a week before last. And he said, I said, well, tell me, tell me what's really going on? Because we had prayer. I can just feel he was dead. He said, Elbert, life is hard. And he literally tell me that, that there's two things that are just on his mind that he can't get off his mind. 
One, he said, I'm praying for people in my church every day when they call or when I go visit. I'm praying for them, and I know that they are they're going through. I'm praying for, for mothers and fathers that have children that are caught up in this opioid crisis or, or other substance abuse. He said, I'm praying for a young man right now that has mental illness and we can't find help for him. He said, I've got parents that are laying awake at night right now. I'm praying for them. And their kids are being drawn more to gangs than they are to the church. And they were raised in the church. And he said, I see all these things. He said, I see a government that does not really appear to be in tune with what our citizens need. So that's one thing. And the second thing is, I'm struggling too. I've got a family. And I said, how can I, how can I be effective when I see all these things going on with, with my parishioners? When they come to me and they want prayer, I am so full, I want prayer myself. <laughs> and he said, life is hard. What I didn't tell him was, no, it's not. Because life can be hard. But the whole time he was talking to me, all I could think about was Paul's second letter to, to, to Korean. And Paul, as you heard the scripture this morning, Paul was his second letter, and there's some thought that there were several letters that Paul written, written, wrote to that particular church. But this is what we know is his second letter. And Paul wrote this letter because of this. He had gotten word back that the leaders of the church were frustrated. They didn't think they were making an impact. The wiles of the world, the, the sins of the world, was infiltrating the church. And you had church leaders that were frustrated. So when this young man was talking to me, that's all I could think about was, was Paul. So I've had him read this scripture and reread this scripture. And the next time we meet, we're going to talk about this is nothing new, young man. Life is hard. Paul has given us a way to deal with that. So this morning, Paul starts off when he writes to the leaders of the church. Paul didn't say, like I didn't say, uh, life ain't hard, life is easy. He didn't say that. He didn't, he, didn't even, he didn't even acknowledge that. He knew you were going through, but he started off by saying this. All praise to God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, God, our merciful Father, and the source of all comfort. Paul starts off by reminding, and I'm going to remind you this morning, the most important thing for us is, is, is our faith, is the fact that we believe in God and God has saved us. That's the most important thing. When I was a young man, I, I, I believed in Christ, I'd go to church, and, and I'll just be honest with you this morning. I believed in God because I didn't want to go to hell. I still don't want to go to hell. However, I realize right now that it's that faith and that comfort that God gives me, that's the only thing that sustains me. It's, it's not me. It's the only thing that sustains me. So Paul is telling that church, I'm telling you this morning, Life. It's hard. Our foundation, our focus, our rock, the only thing we have is God. He saved us. What did Paul say he did? He gave us a comforter. So all those things we go through, we, we know God's in control. Here, 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 here comes the tricky part. Paul goes on to say some things. that He says, when you have trouble, you will be able to give comfort to others. Amen. Even when you're way down in troubles, mm -hmm. your comfort is for your own salvation. So when we go through the, these things, he said you can patiently endure the suffering. And you can be confident to share that suffering with, with others. So I said I'd want to sit on the park bench and talk to my father. Paul may be the second person I want to talk to. I want to ask Paul, the suffering I go through is for my salvation. Explain that to me, Paul. That, 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 
that, that scripture's always, always stood out in my mind. But Paul is saying, you know, there's statistics that says that some of your most effective substance abuse counselors, were, they were abusers themselves. Great counselors that are, that are having success and, and getting people back to a certain level of, of, of living endured sexual assault themselves. So Paul is saying, when we go deep through these things, we can be of comfort to others. He didn't say you're not going to go through these things. So today, you leave this church. Next week, on your job, if someone comes to you and seeks comfort, they may not know the Christ we know. Then again, they may know that Christ and just be in dire need for comfort from, from, from another Christian. So we can listen. Paul says, the fact that we've gone through these things, we can be a more intended listener. We can listen to their problems without judging them, without saying, my son would do that. You can be more compassionate. You know, my wife said something a few, few months ago. We've got a grandson we're praying feverishly for. Feverishly for. And she said something that just, just stood out to me. She said, there's nothing more painful than to see somebody you love suffer. Or go down a road that you can't stop them. She, so, she said, I'd rather be me. And that, that is spot on. So I know life can be hard when we go through those things. What Paul says, those things we go through is for our own comfort. We can be of comfort to others. Somebody else has gone through those things. They can be of comfort to others. We just didn't get saved to be, as I said, not good at hell. We have a charge. We have we passed the peace of Christ this morning. We pass it all the time. You never know who needs that. Never discount small acts of kindness. That may be the very thing that gets the person to the weak. Paul finishes with, now you can do these things with confidence because you have the assurance of Christ. I used to hear, even this, this church here, we used to have testimony services. I don't know churches do that anymore, but I used to hear people testify and say, as I look back where the Lord has brought me from. I get it then. <laughs> Paul is saying, I can look back and say, God brought me through this. He brought me through this. He brought me through this. And here I am right now. He didn't bring me through that. Just, just for I can do my piece in a part in the uphill of the God's kingdom by being a comfort to others. And we can do that with the shots. So, we, we have a charge. God is so good and so merciful. He's given us that comfort. But he's given it to us so we can be a comfort to others. We can share. We won't say, life is not hard. Because life is hard. But we can say, I know a man. I know a comfort. And let me pray with you. And we can do that with the assurance. Yes, yes. I, 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 I would encourage each and every one of you, given the opportunity to, to help someone, yes. encourage someone yes. to have that peace of Christ, yes. and you do it without judgment. Yes. That's what I'm going to tell that young man after yes. we finish reading this scripture. Yes. Amen this morning. Amen. Thank you.